Hello everyone, in today's video I thought we'd be answering a question that I've uh, seen come up more than one time and that's what's the deal with the new missile model and is that realistic or why has it got to be that way? So what I thought we'd do today is I'd quickly show it to you and then I'd load up a program dedicated to missiles and we'd actually show you how it works in the real world ish. Again, it's a simulation. So let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and now fire up my radar. Oh, we got a target. Looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and lock onto that one. I don't care if it's a civilian target. It's too bad. They shouldn't have been flying in my zone anyway. All right. So let's watch what happens here. So our little guy is going to come flying into range here. My uh, SA-2 crews are going to get ready to fire. They're going to start zooming in a little bit. Go ahead and fire up their radars too to help out. And the missile's on the way. Sweet. Let's grab this missile and we can see what it does. So it's going to go ahead and boost itself up to speed here. It's doing about Mach 2. It's uh, climbing pretty aggressively. It's got a pretty good tank of gas here. You can see it's slowly burning through its fuel supply here. Continues to climb, continues to climb, getting a little bit higher, going right after that Boeing 707 that I've used as a drone here. You can see it's starting to accelerate and then it starts to slow down. Uh, that's because the engine has stopped firing. It literally ran out of fuel and it's relying just on momentum alone for the purposes of carrying itself all the way to the target. Now keep in mind, we're at 25,000 feet here, so we're up pretty darn high where the air is relatively thin. So our missile is only pitched up at about 10, 20 degrees. What I'll actually do is I'll go ahead and fire up attack view here. Now, attack view is kind of a good thing if you want to kind of visualize stuff like this. There it is, beautiful. So you can see this guy coming right on up. He's cruising, he's cruising, he's cruising. There's our drone that we chose to shoot at today. And you can see even though it's slowed down to Mach 1.5, oh, bam, we got one hit. And you can see the other one sails on by. So even though the missile ran out of gas, it still had plenty of capability to get to the target. Well, let me show you what this looks like in simple rockets for a second here. Ta-da! So here is my handy dandy uh, SA-2 analog. It's uh, nothing special. Just like a real SA-2, you have a solid rocket booster on the back, and then you have the main body, which is basically liquid fueled here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch this, and we're gonna show you how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this button up at the top. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, whatever, I'm a rocket deal. So this one has a little bit of AI attached to it, but watch how fast this takes place. This launches. Gets up to supersonic, drops off the booster, and it continues flying the rest of the way using a conventional means here. So you can see here this little number up at the top, the 3200. This is how many kilometers I've actually meters I've traveled in this particular case. You also have a little indicator over here which tells you how high off the ground we've traveled. In this case, uh, if we do about 3500 meters here, so that's about 15, 16,000 feet, we've already traveled 10 kilometers. Now, if you remember back in command when we took this shot, we actually took this shot at a pretty hefty distance. I'm actually going to activate my OMS here to kind of help out just a tiny bit. And we have burnout. So right now we are traveling at Mach 3.5, and, a half, and a, we have plenty of energy left. As a matter of fact, I can do one of these things and actually get the missile to go ahead and climb up. So notice I've traveled 32 kilometers already here. I'm still moving at Mach 2, and I still have maneuvering capability. Like, for example, if I wanted to try to bonk into that, uh, hit the side of the beach there, I could go ahead and order my little missile fins, which aren't nearly as effective as the ones you'd probably have on a different type of missile. And I can actually guide this thing towards my target. I've traveled 40 45 kilometers in about four minutes so far. So you can get an idea of just how ridiculous this is. Now, the interesting thing, and the thing I really want to show here, other than I'm about to make a bit of a funky looking lawn dart here, is the fact that by changing the flight profile a little bit, we have a drastic change in the performance of the weapon. Let me show you. All right, let's do it again. But we're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to keep the missile at 45 degrees. Now what we're doing here is we're intentionally trying to get the missile while it's still under power to a higher altitude. So we're changing or basically trading our horizontal distance for our vertical distance. In this case, we're punching through quite nicely. So you can see my Mach number here. I'm pushing about uh, 2.6, 2.7 here. I got about a quarter of my energy. There's my 3.2. So I'm about as fast as an SA-2, of course. And we're gonna run out of energy and there it is. Now notice, because we made this missile travel so high and so fast, even though I'm doing uh, slowing down, I've already traveled 30 kilometers. So what I can do at any time now is if I want to take advantage of this, I can actually level the missile off. I'm now 25 kilometers upwards, and now I can complete my arc and land down on my target below. Um, I've got enough energy left in this particular rocket right now, and I'm still doing uh, Mach 3.6. That's just going to give me an apogee of, uh, let's see here, about 39 kilometers. So you can actually start to see a little bit of space here as we come down. Keep in mind, this is uh, simple rockets. We have a different atmosphere than Earth, but it is to scale of Earth. 
Earth. So now that that has occurred, we can now come crashing back down into orbit with plenty of energy to spare. Look at that, Mach 3. Now let's say I'm like, I want to go ahead and intercept some pesky little whatever down there. So unfortunately for us, uh, we don't have uh, any uh, propellant left, so we have to kind of do this aerodynamically. And because we don't really have a lot of air up here, um, you can see we're really, really struggling to build up any sort of speed. But notice, I'm keeping my speed the entire time as I'm continuing down here. I actually speed up time a little bit here. And you can watch us. Now imagine, I've traveled 100 kilometers so far, and I still have plenty of energy left for the purposes of engaging a particular target. Now notice, like I said, my motor burnt out 20 seconds after takeoff, and this is several minutes later, and I'm still a perfectly usable weapon. As a matter of fact, I'm probably a more terrifying weapon because now I'm going to start my little reentry process 135 kilometers away, and it's going to be moving very, very, very fast when it reenters here. So let's go ahead and get just a little bit more angle on it. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, there we go. So now we're actually picking up speed as we uh, start to re-enter our atmosphere here. And you got to imagine the hapless, you know, B-52 right here that I'm about to go wonk and slam into. And wow, 170 kilometers. We could have gone a lot further than that if we needed to. So what's the point of all this? The point of this is just to show you that just because we ran out of fuel doesn't make us any less of a weapon. And that by tweaking our flight profile, we really get our range. Enjoy.